Jennifer Penn was born on June 17, 1986, in Toronto, Canada. Daughter of Big Ha and Hui Khan Pan, both Vietnamese immigrants. She also had a younger brother named Felix Penn. Jennifer's father was born and raised in Vietnam. In 1979, he moved to Canada as a political refugee. Her mother also went to Canada as a refugee, but on a different date. The two met and got married in Toronto and then moved to Scarborough for a while. They got a job at Magna International, a manufacturer of car parts. Jennifer's father used to make tools and her mother made car parts. The couple was hard working and worked really hard so their children had an education and opportunities that they never had. They saved a lot of money. In 2004, they were already financially stable and they managed to buy a big house in one of the best neighborhoods in the city of Marcan, a city with a large concentration of Asian immigrants. They had also accumulated a large amount of 200,000 Canadian dollars, having had a difficult life in their home country and having realized that with constant effort and education, many things can be achieved in a fair country like Canada, they ended up creating extremely high expectations for their children, where they set goals after goals. Jennifer was required to take piano and figure skating lessons at the age of four, where she practiced and trained almost every day of the week. She had hopes of becoming an Olympic champion and trained for several years, but a knee injury prevented her from proceeding in her career. Jennifer attended Mary Ward Catholic High School, one of the best schools in Canada. That's where she also learned to play the flute and was part of the school's band. According to Jennifer's classmates, her parents were seen as very demanding and controlling. They picked up their daughter from school every day and monitor all her extracurricular activities very closely. Jennifer was banned from dating and partying while she was in high school. Her parents believed that this sort of thing could distract her from her academic commitments. She also wasn't allowed to go on school trips if her parents didn't go together. Despite her parents' high expectations, Jennifer had average grades in school, except in activities involving music. She knew this was unacceptable to them. She then proceeded to forge her newsletters and notes to show her parents. In her last year of high school, she failed her calculus subject. Because of that, she couldn't get a scholarship to the university she wanted the most. As she couldn't stand the idea of being seen as a failure, she started lying to everyone she knew, including her parents, saying she had passed university. She pretended she was going to university, but instead, she spent her time in cyber cafes, taught as a piano teacher, and even worked in a restaurant to raise money. Jennifer even told her parents that she had won several scholarships, and later claimed that she had accepted an offer in the pharmacology program at the University of Toronto. To keep up the charade, she started buying second-hand books and studying everything she could about the subject. With that, she started creating notebooks full of materials and fake newsletters to show her parents. Jennifer realized that her parents were proud, since for them, she had passed university and was following the path they wanted so badly. She then took the opportunity to ask permission to live with a friend during the week and thus get closer to the campus. Her parents allowed it, but actually, Jennifer wasn't going to live near campus, let alone with a friend. Jennifer moved in with her boyfriend, Daniel Wong. The two of them had been in a relationship since high school, and of course, her parents couldn't even dream of it. Daniel had Chinese and Filipino descent. He lived in the city of Ajax and worked in a pizza place. He met Jennifer at school when they started dating. Due to his low grades, he was transferred to another college. When he graduated, he went to the York University and there he started selling marijuana to other students. While Jennifer was pretending to complete her university degree, she made up to her parents that she started volunteering at a hospital. Her parents believed at first, but then they became suspicious as they realized that Jennifer had no badge and no uniform to identify her as a volunteer at the hospital. It was then that her mother started following her and she quickly found out. Very upset, Jennifer's father wanted to throw her out of the house, but her mother convinced him otherwise. As she had not completed high school due to her failure in calculus, her parents encouraged her to study. 
so that she could finish and then go to university, but she was prohibited from dating Daniel Wong and even going to anywhere that wasn't her job as a piano teacher. Her parents also didn't like the fact that the boy was of mixed race, in this case, as I mentioned, a mixture of Chinese and Filipinos. During this period, Jennifer and Daniel kept in touch secretly. She later claimed that he filled the void in her life. In 2010, when Jennifer was 24 years old, Daniel was tired of trying to maintain a relationship with her, as it was increasingly difficult to see her and the girl's parents didn't like him. He then decided to break up with her and soon after started dating another girl. Jennifer was devastated. She ended up falling into depression and didn't want to do anything else with her life. To get her ex-boyfriend's attention, she started making up some stories. First, she said that a man broke into her house where he showed her his police badge and asked her several questions. Then, she said that several men also broke into her house and raped her. Days later, she insisted that Daniel's new girlfriend had sent her an envelope with munition inside and that the girl was threatening her. Daniel, tired of Jennifer's lies, went to talk to her in person and tried to figure things out. Jennifer then told him that they could find a way to be together without her parents interfering. At that moment, the two set up a macabre plan to get rid of Jennifer's parents. In October 2010, Jennifer comes into contact with a boy named Andrew, a high school classmate who she says bragged about robbing people with a knife. Andrew introduced her to Ricardo Duncan, and she offered him $1,500 to kill her father in the parking lot at his workplace. Ricardo asked for the cash in advance, and instead of the combined $1,500, Jennifer gave him just 200. He ended up giving the money back and refused to go through the plan. Jennifer and Daniel then decided to hire professional hitmen and they would pay him 10,000 for the job. She thought she would inherit $500,000 and the two already had several plans for when they received that money. They then contacted Lenford Roy Crawford, a Jamaican immigrant who already had an extensive criminal record and was willing to kill her parents for the money. Lanford got in touch with two more men to help him, and they were Eric Shankart and David Milvagan. Their goal was to murder Jennifer's parents, but make it look like a robbery went wrong. On the night of November 8, 2010, Jennifer unlocked the front door of her house without her parents noticing, and then she called David, one of the hired killers. A few minutes later, David, Lanfor, and Eric walked through the front door of the house, all of them armed. They quickly surrendered Jennifer's parents and then took them to the basement. They also tied up Jennifer and locked her in her room as part of the plan. Her younger brother, Felix Pan, was not in the house that day. After demanding all the money that was in the house and hand-sacking the couple's room, the three men shot the two of them several times. When Jennifer's mother ended up dying and her father, despite serious injuries, survived. After committing the crime, the three men fled the scene with the money and several stolen objects. Jennifer then let go and called 911. She had no idea her father had survived. When the emergency arrived, they rescued her father by taking him to the nearest hospital. He was then transferred by plane to a better equipped hospital because of his serious injuries. The day after the crime, Jennifer went to give her statement to the police. From the beginning, they began to distrust her. She even went to her mother's funeral along with her brother, as if nothing had happened. Her father did not go as he was in coma in the hospital. On November 22, 2010, she was arrested during her third deposition. Initially, Jennifer told the police that she hired the killers to kill her because she no longer wanted to live. The police was suspicious of her version and said that they had a computer software capable of finding out if she was lying or not. 
and that they also had satellites that used infrared technology that recorded all of Canada, and through them they could see every movement of people, even if they were inside their homes. This was all a bluff, as much light detecting software as the infrared satellite. In Canada, the police are legally allowed to lie to those they are interrogating. With this strategy, they got a real confession from Jennifer, in addition to all the details of the crime. The months of April and May 2011, all others directly and indirectly involved in the crime were arrested, including Jennifer's boyfriend. All of them went to trial in March 2014. The trial lasted 10 months and all pleaded not guilty to the murder charges. On December 13, 2014, Jennifer Penn, Daniel Wong, Lenfer Crawford, and David Mewigan were sentenced to 25 years in prison without parole. Eric Cardi was sentenced to 18 years in prison after pleading guilty to conspiracy to commit the murder. Jennifer's father and brother filed a lawsuit to forbid her from contacting the family. Despite the defense attorney's objections, the judge complied with the order. This crime resonated a lot in the Canadian media, where several questions were raised about the high expectations and demands that some parents had for their children, alleging that this type of upbringing could bring psychological damage to children or adolescents, as they couldn't meet expectations. Till this date, the topic is debated all over the world. Well, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching until the end. Best wishes, and I see you next time.